So uh, I will call to order this meeting of the East Hampton Planning Board for Tuesday, June 16th, 2020. Um, as we have done so far, we are all appearing remotely. Um, and as we've done in the past, if for whatever reason there's some sort of technical problem and we can't finish this meeting, we will continue all these items to the July 7th meeting. So hopefully that won't happen. Um, first up, is there anyone here to speak to anything that is not on the agenda tonight? All right, moving right along. We've got a couple sets of minutes. Did everybody get a chance to look at those? All right, first up is Tuesday, May 19th. No changes. I motion to approve the minutes. Uh, no, I have a change. If they can just correct the name on my uh, spelling of my name, that'd be great. Oh, yeah. Anything else? Any other changes? All right. Motion stands. As amended. As amended. Seconded. All right. So uh, roll call vote. Jesse, uh, all, this is all in favor of approving. Aye. Uh, Chris Cockshaw. Aye. Uh, Brenda Salyer. Aye. Austin Sanders. Aye. Harry Schumann. Aye. James Zarvis. Aye. All right. Next up, meeting minutes for Tuesday, June 2nd. I have to abstain. I'm going to jump in there and correct Brenda's name again, if we can get that one. Thank you. Anything else? I don't. I did not. All right. I move to accept the meeting minutes uh, as amended. A second. All right. Uh, I am in favor. Chris Cockshaw. Aye. Uh, Brenda Salyer. Aye. Austin Sanders. Aye. Harry Schumann. Aye. And James Zarvis. Abstaining. Aye. All right. Excellent. Moving right along, uh, continued public hearing for Walter Merrick seeking a special permit. Uh, property is located at the end of Colonial Ave. So we have uh, some re revised uh, forms that uh, Terry submitted. Um, Terry, you want to just go over sort of what the changes are with what was submitted this week? Or I guess it might have been last week. Sure. Um, maybe I should just uh, share my screen first. Hang on. So, um, since last time we were here, um, basically I've gone out and looked at the site a little more and um, kind of delineated what's being left and what's, what's remaining. I mean, what's remaining. And we've added a couple trees. Um, so on the site plan are showing actually the, the tree, tree line that's actually going to remain. And it's fairly significant. Uh, the golf course is over here. Uh, there's a significant tree line between the golf course and the property on the northeast side. Uh, some very big significant trees up in the north, north end of the property. Um, there are just a few here, but there are also a number of eight to 12 inch trees all throughout this area and then down in here. And at this point, we're not gonna be bringing the sewer into Plymouth. Um, it was agreed that it could continue to be brought out to Colonial Lab. So all the trees down in this portion of the property will remain. Um, in addition, uh, we, moved, we were able to move the infiltration basin uh, in this area. We moved it back a little bit and what that it does is that allows us to leave uh, the row of vegetation that exists all along the property. Um, I believe that's 28 Plymouth, um, but all along this property edge. Um, so we've got a, a significant amount of vegetation that will remain in that area also. Um, we've changed the, arbor bite, the arborvitae buffer to a six foot stockade fence uh, al along the property line. And then in addition, as we discussed last week, uh, we've added a couple maple trees in between the two basins. Um, now, when we were out there, we really did look carefully at what was there 
and in terms of visibility of, of the golf course and um, Northampton Street. And really, even if this was all stripped off, you can't really see Northampton Street from this site. This area on the northeast side is actually fairly elevated and there's a good sized berm. And then up in here, there's a large barn that, that blocks the view going further on along with houses um, in, in numerous locations. Um, but uh, at this point, you know, most of the vegetation along this perimeter and around the site will end up remaining. And basically there will be limited to no um, visibility of going across into, into the adjacent property in Northampton Street. Um, oh, one other thing is a last minute comment that came in um, and uh, that I'll show you on another plan was in regard to the location of the, um, of the proposed sewer run onto Colonial. Um, and oh, that's the wrong one. Uh, I'll try that again. Um, yeah. Uh, in this area here, uh, there was concern about the proximity of this, this manhole to the maple tree. Uh, it was located just off the driveway and have since moved it over into the driveway so that it is about 10 feet away from the tree uh, to minimize the impact uh, that it might have on the tree roots in that area. That's, that's about it. Okay, uh, any questions from planning board or planning department? Um, I have one first a statement and then a question. Um, I think this is an excellent improvement over two weeks ago. I think the um, delineating the tree line um, as it will exist after construction is complete is does provide some good screening. I think also showing the additional trees that um, Commissioner Salyer and I recommended um, is 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 wonderful. I like that a lot. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if it's the right time, uh, Jesse, to to reference a, a a letter that came in from a from an abutter to ask a question about it. Yeah, I was going to read both the emails we got. If there's, okay. I'll take some questions first, and then you can follow up on that. Jim, do you want to ask a question now, or do you want me to read the emails first? Emails, please. Sure. All right. <clears throat> so. Tonight is a night of public reading for me. Um, first up, we have an email from Jessica Pika. Um, Dear Mr. Bag and planning board members, I am contacting you in regard to the proposed development on Colonial Ave, map 128, parcel 121. As other abutters have shared, this parcel offers a buffer to the busy and loud Route 10 traffic. This proposed development would clear cut most, if not all, trees. I have attached a picture taken as I was sitting on my patio during the last planning board meeting and looking over towards the Colonial Ave property. I was saddened by the realization that it might soon be gone. In summary, my partner and I are opposed to the project. Thank you for your consideration. And you probably can't see it, but there is a nice picture there looking at those trees. Um, next up was an email from Meg Kennedy uh, that came in this afternoon. Hi, Jeff. I just want to reach out to you before tonight's meeting. I'm not sure if the meeting will be more discussion or if the board will be voting, but I want to add a couple more comments and a request. I'm going to repeat this because it's very important. No one in this neighborhood wants multi-rental units. It devalues our property. I ask that all the board members ask themselves how they would feel if this was proposed in their neighborhood in their backyard. Condominiums are a better choice, and a single-family home is the best for this area. I've heard all the studies and reports on how it would be a minimal increase in traffic parking and sewer usage, and I'm not buying it. Eight more bathrooms, eight more dishwashers, eight more washer machines, and eight more vehicles adds up. The buffer is also a big concern. If all that land is cleared, a significant buffer between this area and the Tasty Top property needs to be agreed upon with this permit and any others going forward, meaning the buyer of Tasty Top. We are entitled to quiet enjoyment, and the loss of that buffer would have a significant impact on that right as property owners. My request would be if the board approves this permit, the white vinyl fence would be installed as soon as it can be. I realize the land needs to be prepared first, but I would want that fence up before construction begins. I know my wording left space for legal interpretation, but I hope they would, they would do right by me and install it as soon as that stretch of property is cleared. Thanks for your time, Jeff. Margaret Kennedy. So I guess my question is about um, Mrs. Kennedy's or Ms. Kennedy's um, letter is, um, how feasible is it to install that vinyl fence at the 
kickoff of the project. I, I would put that to uh, Walter. Well, uh, I just unmuted you, Walter. Sorry. Can't hear him. Oh. I don't know if his audio is not connected, possibly. Is he the phone number two? I think he is. I'm a phone number two. Oh, okay. Ah. We got it. We got it now. Uh, okay. I'm a phone number two. Yeah. <laughs> I guess the, the speaker is not working on this computer. Um, we could definitely put the fence in. We'd have, have to clear the trees first. Um, but um, I wouldn't be opposed to putting the fence in as early as possible. But we well, would have the, to clear the trees. The revised plan shows that there's no tree clearing or am I misunderstanding Terry's presentation? There is tree clearing um, along that property though. It would be, it would have, to, it would be worked uh, through the trees. There's some, there is some that will, will in that area have to be thinned out, taken out uh, adjacent to the infiltration basin. Um, but otherwise it will be, run through there along the property line. Okay. I think we've found in the past, Mr. Merritt, that, that the screening, getting sort of screening up before construction for abutters can be, make a big difference for people. And so I think to the extent you can sort of work to expedite that, that would go a long way. I agree. I'd like to know right. a little bit more about that fence, if that's okay. Yeah. Uh, can you tell me about your intended height, uh, both top and bottom type of fence? This is uh, is a six foot high, um, probably PVC white stockade fence. The only question I had um, was because I think from the previous meeting it, we talked about the, like a wood stockade. So we're all acknowledging that we're discussing a material change on the, the the material of the fence, right? So is that is that also something that um, the applicant? is willing to consider the change in material? I think we are always planning on a PVC fence, not wood. Because wood, 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 the wood would require maintenance, okay. but the PVC would not. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Zarvis, is that, I mean, so most fence, you know, most fences get installed with some uh, you know, room for error between the between the ground and the bottom of the fence. So, you know, and the building inspector looks at that, and there's a I don't know if there's a rule of thumb or something, but you know, within reason, the fence bottom gets installed, and then it's six feet up from there. So, it's a six foot tall fence, right? So, does that clarify your question? Well, yeah. I mean, clearly, coverage is very important to the residents, but you know, allowing small animals through at certain points is also important. Uh, the material change is interesting. I, I, I'm really not expert on, um, you know, what such a property change would have to do. Obviously, maintenance would be easier with a plastic, but uh, in terms of um, sound mitigation from the other side or, or visibility mitigation, we're still talking about an opaque fence. Is that correct? This is not. This is not lots of little holes. Oh, no, this is this is a stockade solid fence. All right, that's I have no issue with that. Any other questions from planning board members? Uh, yes, I have a question in terms of the two letters from Ms. Pika and Ms. Kennedy. Um, I, I'm not familiar with 24 Plymouth Ave. So I was just wondering about that vantage point that she shared from her backyard. Does the new plan result in those trees staying? And the same with Ms. Kennedy's concern about the buffer. Does the new plan take care of that? Yeah, the, all those trees that you can see in that picture basically will, will stay? Yes. Great. Thank you. You know, in general, I mean, it, I, can't, I can't promise ones in the background but the, the ones that you see directly in front are, are not. Okay, great. Any other questions from board members of the planning department? Okay. Um, 
Jeff, do we want to call down our list of abutters and see who wants to talk? Yeah, let's do that. Um, um, just give me a second. Yeah. Okay, so the order I just took them down, we would go um, Kevin Mulligan, um, Andrew McAlpine, McAlpine, sorry, I keep saying that to the name, Tina Goggers, iPhone, Leslie Tain, and David Gogger. So I guess um, you know, we can go through, um, you can unmute yourself, I believe. Um, so um, we'll first ask Kevin Mulligan. Hello, Jessica, Kevin Mulligan here. Um, well, thank you, you got my email. Um, we don't really have any additional comments. Um, yeah, that, that covers it. Or, yeah, same here. <laughs> you know our view, so thank you. Thank you. Okay, and so then next would be um, Andrew McAlpine. Hi, we don't have an ad right now. Thanks. Thank you. And then um, we have, so we have both the Goggers, so either Tina or David. Um, and then we'll skip, you can unmute yourself if we, if you want to say something, but then um, Miss Tane, Leslie Tane, is all too. I don't have anything to add. Thank you. The goggers are unmuted. And Meg, Meg has Tina's phone. Um, David, I can see that your phone is unmuted. Do you want to say anything? Yeah, um, Jeff, I just uh, got in here late. I I had to work a little late. Um, I didn't hear anything about the fence, and I'll, I'll hear about it from uh, Meg and stuff. But if if you look on the um, original uh, for sale uh, by Canon pictures that they put up, um, it was during the winter time or the fall. All the trees were down, and looking from my house straight out, um, there's plenty of nice trees that are still standing in the winter. I mean, the brush is all down and stuff like that. And even with those trees, you can still see over across the field and towards McDonald's and, and stuff like that. And really my biggest concern is just the, the view that's going to be uh, taken away or the, the lack of uh, privacy from cutting all those trees down. I, I, I know, uh, you know, things have to be done, but I, I really hope somebody takes in consideration the, the, the trees that are out there because once you cut them down, they're never coming back. And it's going to be a sorry sight to be looking over into those uh, fields and looking at the pot factory or McDonald's or listening to the, the blowers on F.L. Roberts' car uh, wash every, every summer day. It's, you know, I really hope you can save a lot of those trees. And, and even beyond the tree problem, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things to do with the site, but the sewer problem is, is, is like something that really has to be taken care of. I mean, those people down there, Kirk and his wife, they should not be uh, subject to their cellar filling up with uh, sewage. And, and it all comes back, you know, it, it makes sense now with, from what I understood the last couple of weeks is um, there, there has been times I've lived here for 20, 30, 30 years, and there's been times I come down the street and I smell like raw sewage. I'll sit in my yard and I can smell sewage and stuff like that. And I, I never really knew what it was all about. I just, it, it just struck me funny that I, I smelled it, but learning from the sewer problems that they have, that that should be a, a number one priority um, fix before anything gets done. And I know they're saying, well, it's not going to put much um, tax on the uh, 
<clears throat> on the sewer system, but any more is going to be too much, you know? So that's, I mean, I, I know the trees and the nature and all that stuff is, is one thing, but that sewer problem is a big, big problem. And I had my, I had my sewer pipes all uh, dug up about probably 10 or 15 years ago. And it, it was just a, a terrible experience. And I can't imagine what they're going through down there every time they start smelling it or you get some high rain. So that's, that's, that's my main concern. And other than that, you know, I hope that, you know, a wise decision will be made. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from the planning board or planning department? Does Meg got one? Meg? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Hi, sorry I, I got on late. Um, it's a little difficult navigating to get on the Zoom. I think it'd be great if the um, calendar was the link the uh, monthly calendar because you go to the meeting and and it says oh click here but there's nothing so uh, a couple yeah. of us have had trouble just um getting on board tonight i don't know why but there was no invitation no number i have zoom but i had no number to log in so um so i missed the whole opening um but i know there was talk of the fence and i apologize if you could just kind of uh give me the reader's digest version of that Terry, can you give a quick recap of, of what the fence situation is going to be? Sure. With, with what I said before is that basically the fence is going to be a six-foot stockade fence, uh, white plastic PVC stockade fence, is, as you were hoping. Um, we've been able to move the infiltration basin back to allow uh, retention of a few more trees along that edge. Basically, all the trees... Uh, Within about the 15, 20 feet of the edge of the property, I believe we've got it 20 feet at this point, will be for the most part retained. Um, and uh, so that there will still be, you know, in the summer, a pretty solid vegetative barrier along there. Um, I also talked about how that we've got a significant number that remains along the golf course. Um, and basically, uh, you know, the, the view over onto Northampton Street is pretty much non-existent because of the berm that's there. It, the land rises up, plus there's a barn and, and houses. That prevent yeah, that ain't going to be there for long, see though. So, um, and then we have a, a minor change in the sewer uh, to help protect the 60-inch maple at the corner. And yeah. that's basically Perhaps, sorry, you could share that drawing that you shared with us showing the, the tree line as it will is proposed to appear after construction is complete. So the applicants could look at that picture again. Or not the applicants, though. Um, Megan and David. Uh, the other uh, the other one that has the yeah. actual tree line. So basically, we've been able to move the infiltration back a little bit so that this whole area of vegetation can remain. Additionally, all this area of vegetation will be here going back. And then there's a significant buffer of vegetation along the adjacent property with significant major trees. Are they putting it in? Plus all up in this corner, along with numerous other eight and 12 inch trees all along in this area too. So uh, we don't anticipate any, any significant Reduction in, in vegetative buffer. Mm -hmm. And you've added trees as well, additional yeah. trees. Can I ask a question about the trees? Sure. Um, so, just so I'm clear, the two red maples that are north of the infiltration basin, if the barn you know, is destroyed or taken down, will they provide a barrier eventually once they get tall enough? Yeah, those two trees, uh, the two new red maples. These yes. two? Yeah. Well, so they, these, are, these are just enhancing 
you know, screening that would look across under the golf course. It's here. There's okay. a, barn up, a significant barn up in this area. I see. Okay. If that were to get removed, there'd still be all the vegetation that's all in here too. Okay. Plus the, the land comes up fairly significantly up in this area too. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions, public or planning board? Reading time. I had, I have one more question um, for the applicant. About a month ago, uh, we asked, someone asked, um, and a butter asked about whether these units were going to be sold or rental units. And I think at the time, the applicant wasn't quite sure. I'm just wondering if, um, you had any further thoughts about that as to whether you were going to sell these as condos or, or rent them? We haven't made a decision at this point. Okay. It all depends on the market. Okay. So what about the parking? No. All right. Any other questions from the public or the planning board? This is Jessica Pika. Um, I have a quick follow-up question, if that's okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, I was just curious if um, everyone from the planning board have visited the site. I did. Uh, both Colonial Ave and uh, Plymouth Ave, and I walked the property, up, you know, as far as I could. <laughs> I, uh, I did visit the site in my car and I got out and I stood at the edge of the property, but I did not enter the property on both sides. It's just colonial for me and I didn't get out of the car. I, I walked both streets. So I think we, we've had a pretty good look on the ground. Um, Thank you. Sure. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Um, we, I just want to address, you know, we talked about this, I think, at the last meeting, sort of like the, the multifamily concept. And, you know, we're really, the planning board applies the bylaws as drafted by the city council. And, and this is a bylaw section that allows this in this context. And so that use and then also the issue of sort of whether they're rentals or condos is not something that we can really use as consideration. I mean, we really have to be looking at sort of what the project on the ground is doing. So all these things that we've talked about, you know, buffering and traffic and sewage, like those are all valid concerns, but we can't really deny or allow a permit based on the fact that it's going to be rental versus, you know, condos or something like that. So a lot of this is sort of where, you know, we don't have a lot of discretion on that sort of stuff. And so we spend a lot of time looking at the bylaws and we're about to go through a couple sections of bylaws um, that really sort of limit what our scope is. So I don't want people to think that we're ignoring those issues. It's really the fact that the bylaw is crafted, you know, sometimes intentionally, sometimes unintentionally to limit the number of considerations that we as a board have. And, and that's what we're required to do. And we can't really go further afield than that. So I, I just don't want people to think that, that that somehow is being ignored as a concern. Um, okay, so we do have a um, draft decision um, that has several pages of findings that I think we'll stick with our regular policy of reading through the findings and going over each section. Um, so if you're following along, this is on page four of the draft decision, and I'm just gonna start reading through these sections and we can talk about them when we need to. Um, so findings in accordance with section 8.3, multifamily housing, the planning board found. 8.31, multifamily dwellings by special permit, A, Multifamily dwellings shall be permitted in the R5, R10, R15, R35, DB, HB, MB, and MI districts as noted in Table 5.1, only upon issuance of a special permit from the Planning Board as specified in Section 12 of this ordinance and in accordance with the additional requirements specified herein. The proposed finding states the Planning Board finds that the property is located in the R10 zoning district where the use is allowed with a special permit. Planning Board members, feel free to speak up if you want to talk about any of these things or 
tweak it. B, multifamily dwellings with at least 15% of the dwelling units and not less than one unit, meaning the criteria for affordability as defined in section 8.34 shall be permitted in the R5, R10, R15, R35, DB, HB, NB, and MI districts as noted in table 5.1, only upon issuance of a special permit from the planning board as specified in table 5.1 of this ordinance and in accordance with the additional requirements specified herein. Proposed finding states the planning board finds that the proposal does not contain any affordable units, therefore this section is not applicable. C. The development shall be served by a public water system adequate in terms of fire protection and domestic use. The development shall be served by a public sewer or an individual on-lot septic system which meets the minimum requirements of Title V State Environmental Code and the rules and regulations of the East Hampton Board of Health as amended. Proposed finding states, the planning board finds that the proposed duplexes will be served by public water and public sewer, both being accessed from existing infrastructure on Colonial Ave. 8.32, dimensional requirements. A, all multifamily dwelling units shall conform to the dimensional requirements specified in table 6.1 and table 6.2. The proposed finding states, the property is 36,266 square feet, where table 6-1 requires 10,000 for the first unit and an additional 5,000 square feet for each additional unit. A total of 20,000 square feet is required for four units. The property contains 175 feet of frontage on Colonial Lab, which exceeds the minimum, minimum requirement of 100 feet. Building one facing Colonial Lab will be set back 20 feet from the front yard, where a minimum of 20 feet is required, and 15 feet from the side yard, where a minimum of 15 feet is required. Building two will be set back approximately 40 feet from the side yard, where a minimum of 15 feet is required. Pursuant to Table 6-2, the buildings are less than, 40, less than the 40-foot maximum height and two stories where three stories are allowed. The proposed building coverage is 20%, where 25% is allowed. B, more than one structure may be allowed on a lot in a multifamily housing project by special permit from the planning board, provided that the minimum lot size requirements in tables 6.1 and 6.2 are met for each structure. Proposed finding states, the planning board finds that two structures are allowed under this, this special permit, each containing a duplex. C, the maximum number of dwelling units per structure shall be 18 with the condition that R15 and R35 districts that the minimum yard setbacks be increased to 50 feet if a structure contains over six units. In the mixed use mill industrial, the planning board by special permit may allow a greater number of units in the historic mill buildings. The proposed finding states the planning board finds that this section is not applicable. 8.33, additional requirements for multifamily dwellings. 8.331, site and layout requirements. A, the development shall be integrated into the existing terrain and surrounding landscape and shall be designed to protect abutting properties and community amenities. Building sites shall, to the extent feasible, minimize use of wetlands, steep slopes, floodplains, hilltops. Two, minimize obstruction of scenic views from publicly accessible locations. Three, preserve unique natural or historic features. Four, minimize tree, vegetation, and soil removal and grade changes. And five, maximize open space retention. And six, screen objectionable features from neighboring properties and roadways. Um, this, we don't have a proposed finding yet, but I think that we heard a lot of discussion, and I think this highlights a lot of the concerns the abutters had, um, both protecting the view from the abutters onto the site, which was addressed by um, not only the stockade fence, but I think the developer um, has, has made significant efforts in trying to preserve as much of the trees as possible, as many of the trees and as much of the growth. Um, and then on the other side, the buffer um, between the parcel and the tasty top parcel. And it, it, they've done a good job preserving that and also adding additional trees where they can fit them. They've moved the basin to make space for more trees to be planted. Anything else, Brenda, do you have something to add? Um, yeah, I was thinking, can we just add some detail about the fence, a white PVC fence? Yeah, we'll add that, I think, in the conditions. Oh, very we'll good, okay. specific condition. I see, thank you. Or Jeff's gonna add it right here, might as well. <laughs> um, sorry, there, this is really the only finding that you know, in, in reviewing the materials and the discussions from the last couple of meetings, this was the finding that um, the board really needed to, to continue to and finalize the discussion tonight. So, um, um, it's hard to do this on the spot. Yep. Um, So 
so that's the I think that frames part of most of the, the finding here. Um, yeah, maybe just something else too about the efforts to preserve. You know, I think they they were able to preserve more trees on the far property line too, abutting um, the tasty top parcel. Okay. I would like to modify a combine with the fact. Okay. Yeah. Um, maybe just remove combine with the fact and just put and. Um, <laughs> I think that we don't want to state facts on something that's not constructed yet. Okay. Great. Okay. So then, so then the draft proposed finding here says the planning board finds that the plan revisions to reduce tree clearing on the south property line combined with a white vinyl fence, the addition of additional trees in between the retention basins and the preservation of trees along the north property line and substantial trees on the abutting property will remain, will, I think you can get remain out of there, will provide adequate screening. And I think on the second line, you can get rid of the addition of, and so it just would become uh, additional trees. Yeah. Point, uh, so, f comma after fence, and just say additional trees, so you can get rid of of. Perfect. There you go. Does right. that look good to planning board members? Okay. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Um, all right. B. More than one structure may be placed on a lot, but no residential structure shall be placed closer to each other than 10 feet and must be visually separated by trees and plantings. In addition, each dwelling must be provided with access, drainage, and utilities functionally equivalent to that provided under the Planning Board's subdivision rules and regulations. Proposed finding states the Planning Board finds that the proposal meets these requirements based on the final site plans. C, in the DB, HB, and MI districts, no dwelling shall be permitted on the street level. Proposed finding says the planning board finds that this section is not applicable. 8.332, design requirements. A, buildings shall be in harmony with the prevailing character and scale of buildings in the neighborhood and the city through the use of appropriate building materials, screening, breaks in roof and wall lines, and other architectural techniques. Variation in detail, form, and siting shall be used to provide visual interest and avoid monotony. Proposed buildings shall relate harmoniously to each other with adequate light, air, circulation, and separation between buildings. Proposed finding states, the planning board finds that the proposed elevations and design of the duplex buildings are in harmony with the prevailing buildings in the neighborhood. 8.33, vehicular and pedestrian access requirements. A, the plan shall maximize the convenience and safety of vehicular and pedestrian movement within the site and in relation to adjacent ways. The proposed finding states the planning board finds that the project will have minimal impact on traffic in the neighborhood and the additional vehicle trips will not negatively impact the condition level of service of left turns from Colonial Ave onto Route 10. B. Multifamily structures shall have access on roads having sufficient width, suitable grades, and adequate construction to provide for the needs of vehicular traffic generated by the site. The planning board, oh, proposed finding, I think we need to make that not bold there, Jeff. The proposed finding states the planning board finds that the condition of Colonial Ave is sufficient to support four additional units. Okay, yeah. uh, C, connecting walkways with tree belts shall be provided between structures and parking areas within the site and shall be constructed in accordance with the standards set forth in the East Hampton subdivision regulations. Proposed finding states the planning board finds that the proposal does not include walkways and that they are not necessary since there are no sidewalks on Colonial Avenue to connect pedestrians to. So I highlighted that because that was something that was a proposed finding that we hadn't discussed. So interior and the property, there are no internal sidewalks. Right. And so just again, looking at the site plan, you know, in this case, the sidewalks would, if they were, if they were required, they would lead to Colonial Lab, which doesn't have sidewalks itself. So it is a proposed finding for you to consider. Well, and also the buildings are sort of standalone structures. It's not something with like a community house or a lobby or anything. So getting from one building to another with an interior sidewalk seems like it's not going to be high use and not going to serve much of a purpose. Any other thoughts from planning board members on that issue? Just I like your finding. 
Yeah, just a grammatical one as to uh, are you gonna? You can you can say it and. I'll wait till you're done. It is designed to cover, you know, a, a multifamily with, you know, it could be many buildings. And so that, I'm just trying to distinguish that back. Okay, so the grammatical change? Uh, the On the highlight, highlighted, the very last word you can get rid of. You don't need the two there. It's just to connect pedestrians. It's the most humbling experience is to have someone. I'm sorry. It's what okay. I do for a living. It's part of what I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, next up, 8.334, open space and buffer area requirements. A, the board may require that a minimum of 50% of all land not devoted to dwellings, accessory uses, roads, or other development be reserved as open space and be made available for active and passive recreation. Proposed finding states the planning board finds that the property will contain, contain adequate yard areas suitable for active or passive recreation for the tenants of the project. Mm -hmm. Any issues with that? Anybody? No, no issues. B. Um, I'm yep. sorry. I, I just, in the prior clause, is it missing a word? Should it say does not? In, in the prior one? Which one? Uh, if Jeff can scroll up oh, one. Sidewalk. Yeah. yeah. The pr this proposal no. is oh. small scale and does not. not. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. B, multifamily dwellings shall be separated from adjacent properties by buffer strips consisting of trees and or fencing sufficient to minimize the visual and noise impacts of the development. Such a buffer strip shall be at least 10 feet in width and it shall contain a screen of plantings. The screen shall not be less than five feet in width and six feet in height at the time of occupancy of such lot. Individual shrubs or trees shall be planted as close as necessary to create a visual screen and shall thereafter be maintained by the owner or occupant so as to maintain a dense screen year round. At least 50% of the planting shall consist of evergreens. A solid wall or fence not to exceed six feet in height complemented by suitable plantings may be substituted for such landscape buffer strip as approved by the planning board. The strip may be part of the yard. Proposed finding states, the planning board finds that the installation of a six foot tall stockade fence along the south property line adjacent to the existing residential property is sufficient to meet this section. The planning board notes that the fence is the preference of the immediate abutter. 8.335, parking, loading, and lighting requirements. A, to the extent feasible, parking areas shall not be located within a required front yard and shall be screened from public ways and adjacent or abutting properties by building location, fencing, or planting. No individual parking area shall, shall contain more than 14 spaces. Parking spaces shall be located not less than 15 feet from the front property line and 10 feet from the back or side property lines. No parking shall be allowed on interior streets. The proposed finding states the planning board finds that the primary parking area for the unit is in the garage. The unit facing Colonial Ave may have two parking spaces in the front setback. Otherwise, the proposal complies with this section. B. Exposed storage areas, machinery, service areas, truck loading areas, utility buildings and structures, and other unsightly uses shall be set back or screened to protect the neighbors from objectionable features. Proposed finding states, the planning board finds that the proposal is small residential units where no dumpster or service areas are required and this section is not applicable. C, no building shall be floodlit. Drives, parking areas, walkways, and entranceways shall be illuminated only by shielded lights not higher than 15 feet. Proposed finding states that the planning board finds that this proposal does not include any lighting poles or fixtures other than those at the entrance doors to the dwelling units. 8.336, water supply and sewerage requirements. A, water supply and waste disposal systems shall not place excessive demands on municipal infrastructure. Proposed finding states that the planning board finds that the proposed four units will not place excessive demands on the municipal sewer system. Do we wanna mention anything there about the DPW director evaluating that and confirming that or is it just that we're f I mean we can put that as our source what do you think Jeff yep I like that a lot because I think it's important to show where the information came from in this case given yep. the contention yeah. yeah I will double check the date of the of the correspondence from the DPW director, but I think it's May 29th. So okay. I'll double check that. Yeah, it is. Okay, thank you. Yeah. 
8.337, stormwater runoff. A, to the extent feasible, measures for runoff from impervious surfaces should be designed to meet the following objectives in an appropriate manner. One, prevent non-point source pollution from urban runoff to streams, water bodies, or groundwater. Two, prevent the flooding of other neighbor neighboring down gradient properties. Three, promote recharge of groundwater aquifers while preventing pollutants from entering groundwater. Proposed finding states the planning board finds that the project complies with the city's stormwater management ordinance and issues the required permit herein. 8.338, utility requirements, electric, telephone, cable TV, and other such utilities shall be underground. Proposed finding states the planning board finds that all utilities will be underground upon leaving the public way. 8.339, accessibility requirements. Development seeking permitting for deed restricted multifamily housing for persons over age 55 shall design first floor units for universal access and shall construct all units to allow for future needed improvements for accessibility to persons with disabilities. Proposed finding states the planning board finds this section is not applicable. All right, now to our regular findings for a special permit. In accordance with MGL chapter 40A and section 12.7, special permit of the East Hampton Zoning Ordinance, the planning board found, I guess that's okay. One, conformance with the provisions of the ordinances of the city of East Hampton, the general laws of Massachusetts, and all applicable rules and regulations of state and federal agencies. Proposed finding states, the planning board finds that all other building code requirements will be met and Standish Street will be formally, form, that should be formally, right, Jeff? Formally yeah. continued. Two, Protection of city amenities and abutting properties through the minimizing of any detrimental or offensive uses or destruction of unique or important natural scenic or historic features on the site. Proposed finding states, the planning board finds that the site is currently wooded and its development will require extensive clearing of existing vegetation. And then we're, we'll put in the language we had from the other one. Yep, I believe so, yep. Okay, plan. yep. Goes on to state, the project includes an approximately 290 foot long, six foot tall stockade fence to screen the property from the abutting property immediately to the south. The proposed lighting for the project is minimal and includes normal fixtures associated with residential uses. Three, minimization of traffic and safety impacts of the proposed development on adjacent highways or roads and maximizing the convenience and safety of vehicular pedestrian movement within the site. The I don't think that's part of the requirement. Is it that that proposal does not affect, Jeff? Is that in the bylaw? Uh, it could be a copy and paste issue there. Um, yeah, that's a copy and paste. Okay. That, okay. That, that ends with within the site. Okay, thank you. Um, proposed finding states, the planning board finds that the project will have minimal impact on traffic in the neighborhood and the additional vehicle trips will not negatively impact the condition of left turns from Colonial Ave onto Route 10. Four, adequacy of the methods of disposal of sewage and refuse and the drainage of surface and subsurface water and adequate means of protecting wetlands, watersheds, aquifers, and well areas. Proposed finding states, the planning board finds that the proposed duplexes will comply with this section as the disposal of sewage and refuge is, refuse is similar to other residential uses in the neighborhood and pursuant to the Conservation Commission's determination of non-applicability issued on September 9th, 2019, confirming that the site does not contain any regulated resource areas. Five, mitigation of adverse impacts on the city's resources, including the effect on the city's water supply and distribution system, sewage collection and treatment systems, fire protection, and streets. Proposed finding states, the planning board finds that pursuant to the letter from interim DPW director that the addition of four additional units will not have an adverse impact on the existing system. That seems to be missing something there. Find, finds that the project complies with this requirement based on the letter from the interim DPW? Mm -hmm. you, is that what you said, the, uh, the project complies with this requirement? This requirement, yeah. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Six, provisions for the off-street loading and unloading of vehicles incidental to the normal operation of the establishment, parking, lighting, and internal traffic controls. Proposed finding states, the planning board finds that each unit contains a garage and driveway area suitable for parking of residents. Similar to surrounding neighborhood, guests may park on the street. Seven, 
applicants' efforts to integrate the development of the existing landscape through design features such as vegetative buffers and retention of open space or agricultural land, minimization of the area over which existing vegetation is to be removed, where tree removal is required, special attention is to be given to the planting of replacement trees. So we can insert that same finding on the landscape plan. Yep. Eight, the consistency of the development with respect to setback area, placement of parking, architectural style, and landscaping of the surrounding buildings and development. Proposed finding states, the planning board finds that the proposed duplex units exceed the minimum lot area required and meet the minimum setbacks. The planning board finds the installation of a stockade fence along the south property line is a sufficient screen in accordance with the requirements of section 8.334B and that it was preferred by the abutting property owner. Nine, adequacy of the measures to prevent pollution of surface and, or groundwater to minimize erosion and sedimentation and to minimize changes in groundwater levels, increased runoff, and potential for flooding. Proposed finding states, the planning board finds that the project involves the construction of two new buildings and associated driveways, and the stormwater drainage system and management plan is designed such that the overall flows leaving the site are not increased for the two 10 and 100 year storm events. 10, adequacy of the methods to ensure that the use will not constitute a nuisance by reason of unacceptable level of air or water pollution, excessive noise, or visually flagrant structures and accessories. Proposed finding states, the planning board finds the construction of two duplexes on the property will not constitute a nuisance because the site exceeds the minimum lot size required and will not result in increased air or water pollution, excessive noise, and the units will be generally compatible with the residential uses in the neighborhood. Stormwater managing, Management Permit. The stormwater runoff from the proposed buildings and paved areas will be collected in a subsurface drainage system and a rain garden located behind the proposed buildings. Stormwater runoff from the site currently generally flows into a ditch located along the northeast perimeter of the site. Following development of the site, site stormwater from the majority of the interior portion of the site will be routed to the rain garden. Stormwater from the paved areas and some lawn area will be routed to a subsurface stormwater system and will be treated using water quality treatment units prior to being discharged to the subsurface stormwater system for infiltration and subsequent discharge to the existing ditch. Uh, and so then the next issue we got to deal with is the conditions um, as drafted. The first one is um, the removal of Stanish Street which we received correspondence from the applicant, um, I believe to Councilman Zare about bringing that before the city council. So I think that process has started. Yep. Um, the second one states the 60 inch silver maple in the Colonial Street right of way, Colonial Ave, I think I yep. should say, um, shall be adequately protected from root disturbance during construction and said protection, protection plan shall be completed in consultation with the tree warden prior to the start of any site work. I think that was the language that the tree warden drafted for us, so that should be good. Um, three, the planning department shall be notified in writing a minimum of five days prior to the commencement of any site work associated with the project. So, Four, yep. Um, can I, so here would be somewhere in here we may need to talk about whether we whether there's a condition about the fence um, being installed um, prior to or. That you know during the commencement of site work, mm -hmm. um, if if the board thinks that that's a condition that you would want to have applied, I think it's a good condition. I think it should say as soon as possible. Okay. I think that the applicant said that they were okay with that, but I, I mean there may be some parts of this that could be considered unreasonable. Uh, I think you, in the letter, it was even noted that the land would need to be prepped at a minimum to some degree first. So I just want to make sure that we don't create an untenable position with whatever language we choose. Um, um. I'm pretty comfortable saying as soon as possible because I think that it it, there's some flexibility there. I think that sort of falls on the building inspector to sort of determine what is or is not possible. But I don't think that there's like going to be an unreasonable expectation, just that, you know, as soon as this can be done, it should be done before any of the other work, ideally. So, Mr. Merrick, do you have any objection with that language? No, that's fine. Okay. Thank okay. you. Um, 
Next up, which is now five, pursuant to the approved stormwater drainage and management plan, the owner shall adhere to all the relevant requirements listed, including construction, period, pollution prevention, and erosion and sediment control measures, short-term erosion control maintenance, and the post-construction operation and maintenance plan revised April 2020. And finally, all exterior site improvements shall be constructed and maintained in accordance with the approved plans and shall be completed prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy. In the event that any exterior changes cannot be completed prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy, an alternative schedule shall be view reviewed and approved by the board at a public meeting prior to the issuance of a temporary certificate of occupancy. All plantings installed pursuant to the approved landscape plan that die shall be replaced by the owner with a similar species and size as originally required. Any other conditions, either planning department or planning board members that you're interested in? No, I'd like to make a really almost regrettable comment. This is almost beneath our notice, but back in the um, special permit uh, criteria for approval, 12.79, the section you read, uh, and I think in several of our, uh, of our um, uh, issuing so far, have you noted that there are noted with letters A, B, C, D, as opposed to numbers in the actual special permit. That is true. I noticed that when I was trying to figure out where that language ended and saw that the letters were not matching with the numbers. Maybe we can fix that, Jeff. It's minutia. I regret even bringing it up. I think it's worth it to bring up mostly because I think when we do our next decision, we tend to start with the last one we did. So I think each one of these things we fix makes it less likely it moves on to the next one. And it might match up in someone's mind as, you know, when they're looking at the document, they'll understand better. Oh, I see. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I, mean, I can correct that. That's, a, that's easy enough. You don't have to do it right now. Just <laughs> It might take me a while. You know how Word, Word documents, one, sometimes one click will send you a uh, Yes. All right. So I'm uh, ready to give you a motion if you want to. I just want, well, I just want one second to ask um, Mr. Merrick or, or Mr. Reynolds if there's anything in the conditions or the findings here that you thought might change anything or that you have any questions or comments about? No, I think I'm fine with them. Great. Thank you. Oh, um, Mr. Yep. Abel has a question. Oh, you're still on mute, Don. Right. There you go. Back to the uh, condition regarding Standish Street. Um, it speaks to the uh, applicant removing Standish Street, and I guess I would just like to clarify uh, perhaps language that says that uh, approval is conditioned on the discontinuance of Standish Street. That's the, the legal standard that we use. That process is already before the City Council. The applicant's involved in bringing that to the attention of City Council through Councilor Zarek, but the, count, the applicant's not really doing anything. So if we just make it conditioned on the discontinuance of Standish Street as a public way, and that no certificate of occupancy shall be issued by the building department for any homes until such condition is satisfied. But I think that speaks better to the, to the process. I think that describes it accurately, Don. I agree. All right, Mr. Zarvis, I'll take your motion now. I motion to approve the special permit for Walton Merrick Colonial Ave, Map 128, Parcel 12. I second that. All right. Um, all those in favor, aye. Chris Cockshaw. Aye. Brenda Salyer. Aye. Austin Sanders. You're <laughs> muted. I tried to use the space bar, but it's not working. Aye. <laughs> Harry Schumann. Also muted, Harry. Harry, you're muted now. Here, oh, there you go, Harry. Okay. Hi. And Mr. Zarvis. Hi. Excellent. Um, all right. I just want to thank um, the applicant and the abutters. I think this was another one of these processes where communication really, really helped. Um, and I think there was a lot of progress made. So hopefully this relationship can keep moving forward in a positive way. But thank you all for participating. Yes, thank you, everybody. Thank you. All right, next up we have new business. Uh, 74 Cottage Street, Verb is Herb, reviewing changes to the operating plan due to COVID-19. Is there someone here to speak to that? 
Hi, I'm Meg Sanders. Hi, Meg. How are you? I'm well. It's a pleasure to meet all of you. Nice to kind of have you join us here, even if it is all virtual. <laughs> exactly. We're all getting used to our new normals, right? Right. Um, all right. You want to just start by giving us a once over of sort of what what we're doing here? Yeah, so um, we just are providing a, a quick, you know, super brief update about um, our business operations at 74 Cottage Street. As you know, we're a, an adult use only dispensary. Um, and we are, first of all, thrilled to be open, um, challenged in the fact that we are open in this new uh, existence that all of us are functioning in, and really um, super excited for uh, other shops and restaurants to start opening their doors a little bit more on Cottage Street. Um, I would say a lot of the concerns that we heard, for, you know, in previous meetings and when we were going through application process was around parking and making sure that people weren't queuing outside. And fortunately, we've just had zero issues with that happening. Um, we've actually had quite a lot of parking available in front of our store. Um, but it's been nice because in meeting new customers that are definitely going to be shopping with us over and over, we've been able to provide a very nice education about, hey, as this starts opening up and these these slots are busy are, are full and across the street is full we've been able to give you know really good directions including a map that um, is on a little card of, of information about the store um, as to where to park and also just how we function and how we um, take your take your order online and it actually was a, a perfect introduction to the store based on our agreement with the town of having appointment only and I, I really do think that we will be able to manage through this as business grows as we have more customers in the store to make sure that we still hold our agreement with our neighbors and the town. Great, thank you. Um, any questions from planning board members or planning department? Is there in fact a change, uh, a formal change or any kind of like written structure change to the process based on COVID? We did. We submitted a full um, COVID plan that actually was gone over um, by the Department of Health, as well as Chief Alberti, um, as well as Jeff. And we were able to basically measure out all of our dis social distancing that we have. Um, a, a lot of things that were a little bit different for our store is that the CCC ruled out curbside delivery. Well, we don't quite fit the prior the um, the uh, guidelines for that in that there's a public sidewalk between our store and the parking and i think for the beginning of this we were we were thinking we didn't want to really push the envelope with that particular ask for the ccc although chief alberti was completely in favor of us asking we started with um just allowing two people inside our person trap and um actually um the department of health came out and measured and made sure that we were with, within certain guidelines and was very happy with the plan and that has worked very well um, as many of you know the governor came out um, about a week and a half ago now with new guidelines regarding um, capacity inside and so we want to move and, and are moving in the direction of allowing up to four customers at a time actually inside on the sales floor and we have that again boxed out completely um, you know visual diagram of you need to stand here and um, it's actually a really great setup in that that even passing, they really don't get inside that six foot buffer. Um, we do have plexiglass installed in front of all of our counters. Um, of course, everyone's wearing masks and gloves inside the store at all times. Um, and we are cleaning on a regular basis as far as, you know, after every transaction, we wipe down the key, um, the keypads. We do encourage our customer base to please use their debit cards just so that we don't have to handle um, money, but when we do, we change our gloves, we put new gloves on, and we wash everything down again. Um, but I have to say, overall, everyone has been, um, you know, very adherent to our, our our operations and and what we need as far as our customer base to come in. We haven't had any pushback on masks. Um, everyone's been very gracious and and accepting of how we're functioning, and um, you know, we just look forward to keep proceeding and building the business even through this COVID um, issue. I have a couple more questions, if you'll allow. Um, I saw this document as Jeff shared it with us a few days ago, and the first thing that crossed my mind was you've undergone a name change, haven't you? 
Not yet. So um, thank you for bringing that up. We have submitted um, our application to the CCC for our ownership change. And I'm the CEO of Canna Provisions, which we have an operational store in Lee, Massachusetts. And then we have a store that actually passed their final inspection today uh, with the CCC in Holyoke and should be opening um, Tuesday of next week. Um, and so once that process, uh, you know, we've, we've been very transparent with the CCC as far as what we're doing and right now I'm uh, you know I'm managing the store but I'm not an owner of the store and um, as soon as the CCC approves our ownership change the name change will happen and then we will be rebranded can of provisions okay I think I'll actually end it there very good thank you very much yeah I, I actually went by the store today just to check it out and everyone there today was very professional and you know sticking with all the requirements it was they were doing a very a great job whoever was there today so Thank that you. Good. Um, any other questions from planning board or planning department? I, I just had one. Um, if it's it's not something I would expect Ms. Sanders to be able to answer, but you know the the notion is that this is temporary, um, and so you know the the structure that we came up with for the special permits was not really ever expecting this, but we we had anticipated um, these kind of uh, operating plans to be kind of initial, and then maybe there would be an interim set of changes, and then there would be, you know, once everything's ironed out, there would be the final operating plan that would kind of carry you through. So, you know, we, we never encountered, we never anticipated this, but, you know, in our discussions, um, the condition of the permit says that there shall always be an approved operating plan in place. Um, and then when we had initial discussions, you know, per personally, I was really relying on the health department, the police department, and the Cannabis Control Commission. And once that was worked out, that's when we started to talk about having Cannabis Provisions come to the planning board and say, you know, we want to put kind of this, this interim operating plan in front of you. Um, you know, the goal tonight is that the board, you know, makes a motion to approve this. But I think that my question, my long-winded question was that this is temporary. We, we, maybe we don't know how long it goes, but at some point, and I think you alluded to it, you're going to go back into the store, and eventually you would want to go back to sort of that, the original framework that we had set up for the, for the business. So, Jeff, does that mean something? we need to come up with a when do they come back time as part of this tonight? I don't, I don't think we do. I, th I mean, I think that what we're going to do, uh, assuming everyone votes for it, is we would approve this change to the plan, and this plan is in effect until they come back with another change. So I think that they can come back, you know, let's foresee a scenario where we know that the state of emergency is going to end in two weeks, or maybe we don't know until it's actually ended, and then they can submit a change plan. You know, there may be lag time, maybe there's a week or two where you're bound by this plan when you don't really need to, but I think that rather than make them come back in 90 days or 60 days or whatever, we have no idea. I mean, that's what we do historically, right? As we say, this is a 60 day plan or a 90 day plan, but this is outside all of our control. So I think rather than make you come back for another meeting where we say status quo, we might as well just put it in your hands that, you know, if, if conditions change and you feel like you can change your plan, then come back and we'll review it and vote on that. Jesse, can I kick back on that just a little bit? Please. Uh, well, I, I really like the idea, honestly. I, you know, the whole thing seems to me as if their opening day plans have gone very smoothly, unfortunately, because of the situation we're in. But telling them that only if you have a change in your plan, doesn't that sort of motivate them not to change the plan? Uh, you know, and, and it really becomes up to them if they want to disclose a change in the plan. Uh, I mean, I think, they, I think that their special permit requires that they comply with the approved plan. So if we vote on this tonight, they're bound. I mean, they could continue op to operate under their COVID plan for the next five years if they wanted to, but they can't deviate from it unless they come back to us. So I think this is a case where they're going to have every incentive in the world to come back as soon as they can. And like I said, the downside is there may be that week or two weeks just to get on the next agenda. But um, I think that's far preferable than even having come back once where there's no work being done and you can't do anything. I agree. We agree. Okay. May I say something? Please. Um, so I would I would say thank you first of all for for uh, bringing that up and 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 pointing out the the operational plan and and the knowledge which we have that it needs to be approved, and um, and obviously this is how we're operating now due to the circumstances. I, I would tell you though in a perfect world this is not 
the business that we want. Um, it, it's challenging to operate under these circumstances, as it is for so many. So not singling us out, just pointing out that this is challenging. Um, so I, I would hope that, um, I'm hoping that we will get a little more color from the governor as we kind of move through here and get in front of you again as fast as possible as things change. Um, I think that as business does increase, we can maintain this plan without a problem. But again, it's not really into the, the financial projections that we've put together and what we really want to see this store do. So we will definitely work directly with you and notify you immediately um, that we need to get back in front of you if we need to make a change um, or as the governor de you know, determines and as the town determines that, hey, we're ready to move forward with a little more opening up or potentially um, you know, moving from the 40% capacity to a different capacity or what you know who knows how this is all going to roll out um, so that's that's our goal is to get to our our business plan and that's that that is everyone's goal I'm sure so so we're looking forward to that time and and this is uh, this is how we would like to operate at this point Jesse one last little question there and I'm in complete agreement uh, uh, with your point just so you know uh, but I this uh, application that they made, they had to pay a fee for that, tons of fees to run this kind of business. But to get before us tonight as a continuation, because we asked them back, there have been no additional fees for that. It's really to Jeff, I guess, right? Currently, uh, Ms. Sanders hasn't paid a fee to be here tonight, is that right? In addition right. to the original special permit. No, no, this is, um, you know, it's designed to allow an applicant to come back you know, we did a little coordination, uh, schedule coordination, but then the applicant come back and present changes. You know, at some point, you know, applicants have that opportunity to talk to the board about changes or small changes. And then maybe it's not this specific scenario, but in some cases, an applicant might come back and say, I've got to change my project. And the, and the planning board can have this kind of meeting to determine whether it's a minor change or a big change that you would decide like, okay, actually, you know, many of butters are going to need to know about this and we want to notify them in the mail and start a public hearing process again. Then, then we would talk about fees, but as of this point, there were no, no but fees, but just the but scheduling. There, but there is, a, there is a real cost to having to come to these, whether they're virtual or in person, which is why, I mean, the alternative would be, we can have them come back every 30 days or two weeks or something. So they're always on the agenda, but that seems like a nightmare. I think you're, you're even the worst case scenario where this changes the day after we have a meeting and they have to wait until our next meeting is, I think, preferable to even coming back once when you don't have to. So I think it makes sense to just, we'll, we'll be ready whenever you are and we'll look at whatever plan changes you propose. Thank you so much. I would agree with that completely. Thank you. So before we move to a motion and a vote, is there any members of the public who have any comments or questions about this? If anybody does, they can unmute themselves and let us know. Does not look like it. A motion to approve the amended opening plan version 3.3 for the Verb Reserve LLC. Oh, you're muted, Chris. I was waiting for someone else to jump in, but I'll second. <laughs> All right. Uh, voting in favor of the uh, operation plan. Uh, Jesse Belcher, Timmy, aye. Chris Cockshaw. Aye. Brenda Salyer. Aye. Austin Sanders. Aye. Harry Schumann. Harry's muted. Harry's Harry on. Aye. Thank you. And James Arvis. Aye. All right. Excellent. Thank you, Ms. Sanders, and best of luck. Thank you so much. And again, it was a pleasure. Yeah, we're very happy to have your store in East Hampton. Good luck with you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Bye. Mike. All right. Next up, similar, uh, 122 Pleasant Street, INSA, also reviewing changes to operating plan for adult use cannabis retail due to COVID-19. Is there someone here to speak on behalf of INSA? For INSA. Yep. I just unmuted you, Steve. So you're, you're now... <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Uh, Steve Riley, for Insta. Hey, Steve, how you doing? Pretty good, everybody. Thanks for uh, inviting us back here. Um, I have uh, I have wild animals that live with me at my house, so I'm trying to keep them quiet, and I apologize if it gets loud here. Fair enough. Why don't Why don't you give us a quick once over, of sort of what what you guys are doing um, in connection with the COVID situation, too? Sure. So uh, at Inso, we, we were fortunate enough to have a lot of space there uh, with the mills and the parking that we have available. 
uh, through our lease with Jim. And we were able to develop kind of a unique plan with uh, kiosks that have been installed outside the building. And we've worked with uh, the Board of Health in Northampton and, and the North, I'm sorry, East Hampton and the East Hampton Police Department on developing that process and uh, also worked with the CCC uh, to, to get that plan approved. So I, I think it's pretty unique. I, I believe it's the only one in the state. Uh, we also implemented something similar at our location in Salem. And it's been working well. Uh, we're able to keep everybody outside the building, uh, create social distancing. What we found is that a lot of people, even though they can go inside now with, with retail available, still prefer to go outside. Um, so the plan is to have this be temporary. Um, but and we obviously don't know what the governor is going to do in terms of extending it. But it's been pretty well received uh, from, from our customers. Uh, we began uh, running police details on a daily basis when we first opened. And we've reached the point now where the details are not necessary. And we, we've worked with the police department on that. Um, so there's a, a few documents that I've provided to Jeff. One of them is a curbside uh, pickup operations plan, which is kind of the summary of the operations in East Hampton and what we've done with the Board of Health and Police Department. It, it's not as uh, technical as the P&P, &P, which is the second document, and that's been uh, submitted to the CCC for their approval. And that really lays out the details for operations of, of the curbside pickup in the, the kiosks or, or vestibules. Um, we also have uh, photos that I provided Jeff of those vestibules and an exterior plan, a site plan that just shows uh, where we have those located and, and where we have uh, parking zoned off and, and where we're doing our line queues. And, and uh, without incident with that plan. Yeah, and Steve, I, I mentioned this um, with the last applicant about the Burr Reserve can of provisions. I, I think I told you too, I went there, I did a run by a couple of weeks ago after this started and everyone was doing a great job with the distancing. And I was a little nervous when I showed up just because those lines start to be almost in the travel lanes for the parking lots, but it seemed like you guys were doing a really good job keeping that clear and lining up like next to the building before you came out and went to a vestibule. So I think that seemed like it was doing a pretty good job with that. Yeah, Jim was really great uh, about that, Jesse. He was able to give us some, some space along the building so that we don't have to have anybody. Because the concern is that people would start to drift if they're in a line that's near yeah. that traffic. So what we've really been able to do is, is move them along the building, um, which is, is, is really eliminated that issue. So you're saying that they were I, – I saw the, the opening was out in the parking lot, and you have moved them against the building? Uh, no, the, the the opening should have been against the building as well. The the twenty fifth, um, okay. we ran the lines down down that way. Um, when the lines are shorter, we don't we don't run them all the way down. So that's when they can kind of tend to, uh, you know, kind of gather near those kiosks. But we've closed off traffic uh, to to go to that part of the parking lot that would say do deliveries uh, for the brewery next door. Great, thank you. I saw it as well. And Steve, you know, honestly, from the documentation, the work you guys put into it and the plan you came up with, you're the gold standard, in my opinion, of, uh, of how to run this kind of thing. I, I definitely, after reading this and after seeing myself walking down the bike path there, uh, I'm very much, you're going to get my approval. You guys are just doing an excellent, excellent job. You're very conscientious and, uh, you know, you're, you're great neighbors. I appreciate that, Jim. I mean, we, we put a lot of effort into that. I mean, the, the plan, um, it, you know, it's, it's not that, that lengthy, but it, it took a, a lot of time because it was just really trying to work with what we were getting from the CCC and the governor's office to try to develop it. And to the CCC's credit, they've been very flexible to allow for some unique situations. And the way that I look at this is every site is unique. You, you know, we just heard Canada Provisions talking about their location. What works at one site doesn't work for the other. So I think it's been really good that the CCC has been flexible with the approach that they're taking under the, the guidance that they provided. That's great. Any other questions from the planning board or the planning department? I do, I do have one more question, which is um, uh, whether you've had any success um, uh, contacting your uh, patrons about the detour in East Hampton? Uh, about which, which detour? 
if you've just had any had any success um oh with the fair information program. out yeah i don't think i don't think it's on oh. google maps uh but i didn't know if you with ferry street uh, you know, I, I guess I, I probably would want to ask the residents there to see what they've been seeing. I think the construction probably has impacted that quite a bit too. Uh, that's been going on on Ferry Street, but yeah, certainly I mean, any, whatever the, this. I don't yeah. have any complaints. Just wondering if you've had any luck as a as a business. Um, I, you her. know, I, I'd have to yeah. ask. I, I, I myself don't don't have feedback on that. Now I'd, I'd have to ask around. And just to be clear, I think what what a. Uh, what Mr. Sanders is asking about is the construction detour. So, you know, I think, I think Steve, you were starting to address that. I know that that kind of probably seemed like it sprung up. So, I think that's what Mr. Sanders was asking about. Is is it, have you had have you had complaints from your patrons or anything? Oh, about, okay. Sorry, sorry. I was a little, I was a little confused by the question. Um, not that I'm aware of. Uh, I have not heard of any. Um, they would, they probably would have bubbled up to me by now at this point if we were hearing things about that. Um, I know that we've been, been been trying to instruct people. We always try to instruct them on the best route to take if there's something like that going on. But but we haven't had any issues with it that I'm aware of. Good. Great. Any other questions from the board? Any questions from any members of the public? All right. Hearing nothing, I will take a motion. A motion to approve the opening contingency plan for INSET Inc. A second. All right. Voting in favor of the opening plan or operating plan for INSA. Uh, Jesse Belcher, Timmy, aye. Chris Cockshaw, aye. Brenda Salier, aye. Austin Sanders, aye. Harry Schumann, aye. James Zarvis, aye. Excellent. All right, Steve. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. Thank and you, everybody. Steve, Have a good night. Before you, Steve, before that was you a good question, up, Austin. Are you still there, Steve? Yes. Yep. Okay. So I don't know if you heard the discussion we have with Canada Provisions, but rather than put a timeline on this, we just sort of decided that this will be in place until you come back when situations improve. Okay. Okay. That works for me. Great. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody. Good night. All right, folks. That concludes tonight's exciting agenda. Um, a reminder that we have a joint meeting with Ordinance Subcommittee next week on the 23rd. And late breaking news is that I will not be able yeah. to attend. <laughs> Believe it or not, the town of Longmeadow is holding an in-person town meeting that I have to attend as town council. So wow. I will go outdoors with hundreds of people. <laughs> There's very few things I would less like to be doing than coming to an ordinance subcommittee meeting with you guys, but this may be it. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I'm sure you I will it. be great. Yes, Jeff. Just and on just kind of a preview without getting into any specifics, but I think we it, it appears that we, you, us, um, are going to be looking at a pretty busy summer. Um, I received two applications today that would um, go for the July 7th meeting. Um, and then I am told that I'm going to get another application or two that would go and line up for maybe July 21st. So in the past, what has happened with that is then they start to leapfrog through the summer. So hopefully no one's going on any vacations. Well, can I bring up a point about that? Yes, please. This uh, format would actually be very conducive to going on a vacation and still being able to participate. Talk to Harry. He's in Florida. <laughs> Just get Wi-Fi. Make sure you're getting Wi-Fi. No second that. <laughs> I will not be here on vacation. I will not be calling in. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. All right. On that note, can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Seconded. All right. Uh, Jesse Welcher, Timmy. Aye. Chris Cockshaw. Aye. Brenda Salier. Aye. Austin Sanders. Aye. Harry Schumann. Aye. James Zarvis. Aye. Excellent. Thank you all again for a wonderful meeting. Thank good you. to see you all. See you and thank you, Jim, for being back again and yeah, able to actually to you, I'm so sorry, yes, <laughs> make motions that make sense instead of my mess. Oh, I'm sure you did. <laughs> no, I did not do fine. <laughs> Bye. Good to see you.